Canadian Rangers, sponsored by Red Bull. And PBR. And PBR. <clears throat> it's like a NASCAR outfit. Like, there's there's stickers all over it for different ads. Hell yeah. The words spoken by a random goon have struck you in the days after the encounter. The man could have been lying, that's for sure. But he said it with such conviction. Watch yourself, or I'll sick the president after you. As a result, you all find yourselves investigating leads regarding this potential connection. And a tip from a contact has finally borne fruit. Literally, in this case. You find yourselves at a communal garden in, a city, in the city park. It was once used for, well, communal gardening, where people would uh, talk and create communities around building, uh, building different garden structures, growing plants of, and fruits of different types, and generally just getting along. However, that didn't sit well with a local libertarian militia branch that's cropped up in the city recently because they believe that any public land could be more profitable as private land. As such, they have since pushed all these communal living people off the land and have set up shop there, charging tolls to use the gardening plots instead. Your tip has directed you that they may have a bit of knowledge about what the goons were talking about when they threatened you with action from the president. So, taking your new junior member, Poseidon, you go to investigate. And now, you guys are at the communal park. You see an unfortunate amount of people packing guns that they carry like they should know what they're doing but don't really know what they're doing. They're just happy to be holding guns. Yeah, do we know if these are the type of libertarians that are libertarians just because they're like Harvard Law math nerds who forget what, you know, like human interaction is like, or are these uh, libertarians because they're depraved perverts? Uh, I'm going to say those are the same thing, but no. Uh... <laughs> I appreciate that those are the two types of libertarians that you're saying, <laughs> like that they're allowed to be. Yeah, no, these are the ones that are scared of roads. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. so like the guy I work with. <laughs> yes. Right, which is, of course, silly because as we've established, the roads are supposed to be scared of us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, no, they're essentially the type that believe in only private property and uh, as such have taken great offense to communal land in the city parks. Oh, huh. Okay. Right. So I'm instantly excited by the idea of turning this into a private law. However, <laughs> I would like to use it. I would like to bulldoze the whole thing rather than charging people individually for gardens and just build a skyscraper and rent out the apartment buildings there. Um, so I'm going to walk up and try to persuade one of these gentlemen with guns to tell me who I can talk to so I can buy this property so that I can exploit it in that specific way. All right, um, all right. So uh, you approach the, the closest looking goon um, who has his face covered with a handkerchief uh, poorly because he's just drooping because he sucks at tying it. And uh, he asks you what you want. Uh, listen here, young fella. Uh, I see this, uh, this space seems uh, pretty undeveloped, um, and I, I think you guys could be making a lot more money here than you could than you are. Um, and I, I'm actually interested in buying it. Uh, who, who might I talk to about that? All right, so I'm going to get you to roll an understanding roll at this point. Oh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> we called it an interpition, but we could, should have called it an interdicen, because I forgot to grab my dice. <laughs> Do you want me to uh, roll for you? No, it's okay. I'm going to use a website. She doesn't trust me. I do not. <laughs> um, roll two virtual dice. I got. I, it. I can hold it up to the camera, Nicole. Like people can see the dice. Like I'm, I'm rolling for. Sorry, psyche. Understanding. <laughs> Understanding. Sorry. Uh, okay. I got a seven. No. Nope. Yes. Hold, please. Yeah, seven. So you got a seven. So using your southern guile, you managed to convince this young lad that there is nothing to fear from him pointing in the direction of your leader. He points over to a small table 
with a one of those if you ever had like a school lunch thing and they have that silver cash register box where they they obviously aren't doing any real calculations they just grab your money and toss into this haphazard mess of coins and bills mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they've got that set up to collect tolls for the for the communal gardens there he juts one thumb over his shoulder and goes yeah gary's over there if you want to go talk to him he's real business minded so we just follow him sure thing thank you young sir um and i saunter over to gary all right uh, and are you two going to follow Dr. Gill, or do you have your own plans to investigate? Well, yeah. So it seems like Dr. Gill is really, like, already on their side. So, like, were, <laughs> were we, as a group, sent here with some kind of, like, m mandate? Like, are we supposed to be defeating these people, or are we just kind of, like, on a fact-finding mission? Well, right now you're on a fact-finding mission because, if you recall, the president is the person who originally set you guys up as a squad. Right. But... Well, but now he seems to be kind of like a shady motherfucker. So you guys are like, oh, man, what the fuck's going on here? Because you're you're all uh, agents of justice, after all. Huh. I, I object to that term. Um, <laughs> justice is objective, and uh, I thoroughly object. Is there any way to kick out Mike Nickel from the group? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it, it, to have that happen, you see... Uh, the uh, the the Atlantic Rangers have a very rigid caste system. It's very traditional stuff, you see. So being a junior ah. man here, you you can't unfortunately kick out a senior member. But may, maybe if you work a little longer in the organization, work your way up to the top, we can talk about it later. Darn. Huh. Well. <laughs> all right. Um. Hmm. Can I go up to one of the goons? You absolutely can. Um. If you approach a goon, you see he's got a. Um, automatic rifle tossed over his shoulder. Um, it doesn't appear to have a magazine in it, so it appears he just likes showing it off to look powerful at this point. Oh, huh, cocky. All right, okay. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yep. Is he white? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are black libertarians, but I'm going to say they're probably a minority. Most libertarians i've ever known have been not just actually white. they're huge in atlantis it is like the thing to be <laughs> that's yeah that's where all the black libertarians are that's where the they all are no uh, that's why we don't know any of them <laughs> any libertarian atlantis. i've ever known has not only been white but terminally white so that's what you should be looking at terminally here. white terminally wow. white i'm into that i'm into yeah. that please yeah so they're not they're like salt and pepper on their steak is a little too spicy for them kind of white here Damn. Wow. So he's black. So he's black. No, he's white. Then. No, he's white. White as hell. Ah, okay. Cool. Is he wearing a <laughs> handkerchief? Uh, he's also wearing a shitty bandana over his face. Huh. So, like, hmm. he tie he's supposed to go over his, like, his whole nose and stuff to cover his identity, but instead he just has it sitting on his chin or what? It's, it's basically <laughs> along those lines. He's, like, he's pulled it like, down. Yeah, basically he got uncomfortable trying to hide his identity, and he's like, well, fuck it. He brought in a note from his doctor to the boss and was like, hey, I don't have to wear this handkerchief over my face anymore. I got a medical what? exemption. Yeah, I want a medical yeah. exemption. <laughs> okay. The in guy that next to him is like, hey, listen, like, we need to cover our dandies. He's like, yeah, but I need to talk. Like, I need to give my demands. Yeah. Okay, I'm in done. that case, then, can I, uh, what was it? Can I not approach the goon? Uh, I have some reason to suspect that he might be a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do what you need to do. You're you. You guys drive the story. I just I'm work black, around right? you. Oh yeah, you be whatever you want. If you want, well, to I don't black, know if we talked about black. your character's description. What is your or your appearance? What do you look like? Oh, can I just make it up? Yeah, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah right oh, I'm, a I'm a black guy. You're, you're just a black guy. Cut. Sounds good. Are you no, a black, black fish guy or just like a black human guy? <laughs> just a black human guy. Uh, black so human guy. Yes, Mega. Are you a white man or a black man, or a minority? <laughs> oh, uh, no. I feel like that's well established because uh, I, I, when I you said you Josh Hansen, Hartnett, so... I picked Josh Hartnett and then Andrew Garfield. Um, so I'm probably gonna say white on this one. Uh, yeah, I also describe myself cool. as like normcore and wearing trendy brands. So <laughs> I feel I like I'm pretty pigeonholed into this. Yeah. And do you feel safe approaching the goon? Um. 
I would say like I should feel safe approaching the goon. Um, wait, sorry. Are you asking my character this? Or are you asking me this? Oh, I'm asking the character this because I'm too. I'm uh, me as a character wouldn't right. approach his character because once again, yeah. white guy carrying a gun with a, a magazine that's not loaded still dangerous. No, it's you're wrong. Right. I, forgot. I have still, to do my it's still uh, the club waiting to happen. My yes. uh, my Keanu voice first magma. <clears throat> Oh yeah, you know, uh, I understand it's uh, it's dangerous out here for you, Poseidon. But uh, sorry, can I call you Steve? <laughs> sure, of course. I I understand it's dangerous out here for you, Steve, which oh, is why watch, I want to cover your back. You know, like I've got your back, so I'm gonna walk 15 feet behind you while you uh, while you look into this. And don't worry, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll jump in if I'm needed. Huh. Your character sounds like a bad ally, Kelly. That sounds like a bad ally. <laughs> yeah, it's not on my character sheet, uh, but Smegma is a huge racist. Uh, yeah, well, it, could, it, could, it could cause a problem in this adventure. Boy, uh, I am not ready. There's a problem, Smegma. I think, well, most of the time when, and once again, you know what I mean? Like in recent history, when a European descent man says, follow me, trust me, it hasn't ended well, you know what I mean? For indigenous people, for <laughs> a lot of folks, unfortunately. Name, name one time that hasn't ended well. Wait, hold on. Canonically, is Atlantis part of Europe? I mean, it was, according to Plato, a Greek island, so up in the air? Oh, shit. Okay. That's fair. Hmm. Because, like, the Greek islands are on the Asiatic Sea, so, like, it's kind of a constant irony. But right. I'm not going to do Should it. I'm not going to do a Greek lesson. voice then for my character. <laughs> Just smash glasses. That's good enough. Or plates. I don't know. I'm not Greek. All right. Yeah. It's mega. I'll do you the favor. I will go first. I'll go talk to the goon. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. I want to. I would like to talk to the goon. All right. Uh, he looks over you and he speaks with a very composed voice, where he goes, "Oh, uh, good afternoon. Can I help you?" Oh, wow, he seems friendly. Uh, well, uh, what's called the... Uh, I hope you're not one of the racists, but uh, I'm Black Steve, and uh, I would like to keep this land public, open to the public. And I would like you all to kindly pack up your things and uh, return the land back to the community. All right, so with that, I'm going to say, yes, okay. that's probably... Uh, understanding role. So, uh, do you happen to have two dice with you, or can you open a dice program up on your browser? Of course, let's do it. Dice. Perfect. Or I can roll for you. No, Kelly, uh, you can only roll for yourself. <laughs> I'll follow the other girl. And... Sorry, I forgot your name, actually. What was your name? <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> Nicole, sorry. Yes. I'll follow Nicole's lead and not do it. I rolled the uh, two. Okay, so it'll actually be, it'll be two d6s, so roll that twice. Say so, what? What? So roll a, a sorry, a six sided dice twice. Oh, I did that. And I got yeah, two. Yeah, you got oh, two snake oh, eyes, like one oh. and one. Yeah. Oh, that, okay. okay. So that means with your understanding stat being a two, that's a total of four. I'm gonna say. Well, he pulls the gun out and kills me. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. no, no, no. <laughs> this is this is a this is a mid level success. So I'm gonna go with. Uh, he looks at you. Goes well. Being that uh, I don't really have the authority to do that, instead, would you be interested in uh, coming to my open forum sometime to discuss such important topics as how we can further, as libertarians, lower the age of consent? Oh, oh no. Yeah. So, <laughs> and once again, this is my character speaking. Listen, fam. I think I'm good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go grab your boy. I'm gonna grab homeboy in the back, Smega. I think he he might he may align with you a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to wherever I was. You know, what I mean, like I'm just taking a bad turn. Uh, I would seriously, seriously consider maybe getting some help from a doctor. You know, what I mean, I heard there's an emergency room near Atlantis, but uh, Smega, come on up, buddy. Now, for context, the the age of consent in Atlantis is like 34, right? The age of consent in Atlantis is a good, safe age that re respects the health and well-being of all parties involved. 
Uh, Honestly, Josh, I'm just having a hard time immersing myself in the world right now. Can you tell me canonically what the age of consent in the uh, version of Atlantis you've created is? I don't have the time. And also why? Ah, well, you see, um, being that they are of Greek descent, they kind of have seen what happens in the ancient world when shit like that doesn't happen. So they have very respectful rules, Kelly. Very respectful rules. Hmm. With even adequate Romeo and Juliet clauses, because no kind of legislation should be binary and rigid, but instead developed. Can I roll to change the subject? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I'm. I'm Actually, I just think I should roll two dice to find out what the age of consent is. I think. I think I you Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to keep fucking moving, Kelly. <laughs> I rolled a nine. <laughs> right okay so uh no so he he beckoned me forward right that's what happened yes yes yeah <laughs> um yeah uh so i follow him and uh seeing that uh you know he he clearly wants some uh some backup in this argument uh i you know i put my arm around him and i gesture to the to libertarians and i say listen my friend <laughs> here he's this this park is really important he uses it every day he hangs out with his family and if you privatize it, people like him won't be able to spend time here. And don't you want to have more people, people like, like him, him around? <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on. People like him. Fab, <laughs> we are all human beings. We need to make- <laughs> what do you mean? So you're telling me you ain't ever walk out of your home and be like, damn, I need to go stroll out in the park? He's been chilling in your basement? <laughs> oh, yeah. She's getting hostile. I love it. All right, Kelly, your argument. I need you to roll an understanding. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, see where this goes. I think my understanding is good. I got a plus one. Uh, which brings me up to six. Six. All right. Well, the guy's starting to focus a little bit more. Gee, I wonder why that happens. Uh, it's not like people are shitty or anything. Mm. And he goes and he goes, you know what? Like, I don't think I can make a call on that. But if you go over and talk to... Wait, is there someone in a a tight, bright costume already there with the boss? You want to go over... He, he kind of, like, loses focus. He's, like, kind of starts walking towards the table, which you take as a sort of silent inclina- uh, indication to follow him. Do I? Now, yes, that's what okay. you do. <laughs> okay, I do that. Do I follow? That's a real question here. Do I, as a black man, feel safe enough to walk <laughs> in the night... <laughs> with a white guy carrying a sl- uh, assault rifle, looking like a white supremacist that just raided the Capitol. Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I mean... Can I get a gun? I... <laughs> can I steal a... Wait, actually, hold up. Can I pull a reverse card and steal the guy's gun? You can absolutely Ooh. make an attempt to steal this guy's gun. I'm going to attempt to steal that guy's gun with no magazine and see where it takes me. All right. Well, we're going to need a body roll at that point. So another 2d6s for you, please. All righty, yo. While he's doing that, uh, Josh, do our, like, Power Ranger, sorry, our not Power Ranger bodysuits, like, protect us in any way from, like, ballistics? Yes. When you're shot with ballistics, they give off a shower of sparks, much like when you get punched. Wait, so hold up, Shmega. Your first concern was yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, he said all of your guys' suits. Like, all of you are protected. Yeah, we're all wearing them. I, like, uh, that, this is my question as a player. I need to know how my character would react in terms yeah. of how much immunity a suit provides him. I, I, mean, I have an idea, then. Shmega, how about this? You go in front of me. I steal the guy's gun. You take one for the team. How are you feeling about this? See, Nicole agrees. I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. level with you, Steve. Hmm. What's what's our goal here? I, our I, goal I, here is the racial equality. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm usually used to fighting from the security and comfort of, of, of like a large metal mech of some kind. And uh, I, I ain't about this. Uh, I ain't about this like street violence. <laughs> street violence. <laughs> you walked up into a park. You saw people. Okay, like- park violence. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> listen. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right, brother. All right. I'm, I can see that you're not going to be, you're not a good ally. So, <laughs> you know, how about this? Why don't we part ways now? I steal this guy's gun <laughs> and you become a part of the white supremacists. Uh, you know, I just, that also sounds pretty dangerous. Like, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go see if there's a mech around. <laughs> all right, you have fun. 
All right, oh. now, if you're going to steal this gun, we need those two dice rolls because I am ready yes. to see what happens I got here. a nine. You got a nine. Holy shit, yeah. We're having a party now. So, with a deft movement that you didn't even know you had, you grab the gun loosely hung over the man's shoulder and pull it back. Snatching it in one go and actually taking the man off of his feet as the, the weight imbalance catches them off guard. So he's on the ground now, and you have a gun, admittedly with no magazine, but with a quick glance, you see there is indeed one round in the chamber. Mm. All right. I immediately start writing a letter to the editor uh, <laughs> uh, detailing my opinions on... Uh, What's uh, why our city is going to shit? Yeah, that's what Spang was doing. The other day, I was just walking in the park and I just saw a black man carrying a gun. Our city <laughs> has really, really gone down. Before that. Like, and at the end of the day, and, and in true Mike Nichols style, downtown is unsafe. Downtown and and is it's unsafe. totally not the police's fault, it is completely the fault of the unhoused. Exactly. Well, it yeah, like me. if you look at Smegma's <laughs> notepad, um, where that he writes his letters to the editor on, like all of them, like you know how sometimes you'll have a notepad that has like something typed on it, like so it's like permanently there. Mm -hmm. So he has a whole notebook uh, where all of the pages start with like in ink, "I'm not a racist, but," and then you fill in. But anyway, so Smegma, I have some bad news for you. You remember how you were a bad ally? Oh no! Uh, <laughs> uh, so now, uh, now, but... Mega, I think uh, I think your time has come to an end, unfortunately. Uh, but, I... uh, here's the thing, though: I will barter and trade with you, with the Nazis, to get that back, get the park back. What do you think? Uh, I I look back at him and I say, you know, man, I'm like. Uh, I'm really deep in writing this letter right now. Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to take it up with someone else. So, I guess I have. So, Meg, I have some bad news for you. I had the gun. You don't. Know. <laughs> I think the letter get. I think the letter can wait a little bit. So, how about this? A, I can kill you. B, you can come and be bartered and traded with. What do you? Uh... I uh, I put the notepad in my pocket and I'm like, uh, I uh, yeah. I hope you know I know a really good lawyer. And I put my hands up and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just start walking forward because I uh, I have no idea how guns work, so I assume it's loaded. That's ah, fair. cool, perfect. Okay, uh, can I now approach the table? You sure can. And as that happens, we're going to shift perspectives to Doctor Gill approaching that before this all happened, basically. So, oh. Dr. Gill, when you approached them, how did you open up dialogue while all this other rigmarole was happening behind? Uh, so, Dr. Gill has decided to switch tax. Instead of trying to convince them that this is a good investment for them, I'm going to convince them that the land is totally useless and that they should just sell it to me because just to take it off their hands for them. Um, and I'm going to use all my Southern charm and all my businessman status and everything I learned being a fake psychologist. Um <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'll get you. You have the libertarians at switch tax. <laughs> I have an idea. All right. So first, understanding roll, Dr. Gill. Uh, yeah, I rolled a seven plus I have a plus two. So that's a nine. Plus, I'm going to say you uh, take out your fake psychiatrist or psychologist degree and sort of like as you're walking towards the table, you kind of you trip like like you're trying to like. You accidentally drop something like, oh, sorry, I just dropped my degree I have. <laughs> <laughs> Which gives you an additional point to give it an e even 10. So, Neat. so our, uh, our head goon, who I think I named Gary, but I've already forgotten. It was Gary. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I never forget a name and never forget a face. All of these goons are named I Gary. I never forget a handshake. Yeah. Gary or Jason. <laughs> Gary. Gary. <laughs> That's that's all we have here. So he is entranced by your argument. He's convinced that he, despite the fact that there are very healthy fruits and vegetables growing behind him, as well as a couple of cannabis plants, legalization came forward about three years ago. Do you mean seaweed? Oh my god. 
Kelly. <laughs> 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 look, do the little laugh. Come on, do the little laugh. Yeah, Kelly. Come Kelly, on, Kelly. Give, give, give her the Come laugh. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> I have to. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to team me up again? Do you mean seaweed? <laughs> There we go. Thank you. That was actually a good pun. I'll give you mad credit for that one. I thought of that one at the beginning of the game, and I was like, it's going to come up. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, he seems very entranced and is ready to open up dialogue. But then he looks over your shoulder. He goes, what the fuck is going on over there? Boys, I need you to go check that out. And so his two goons beside him run behind you to sort of see what's happening as... Black Steve Poseidon and Smegma Glans are walking up to the table, Smegma with his hands up and Black Steve Poseidon holding a gun that doesn't have a magazine in it. But are does you differentiating him from a different Steve Poseidon that's in the same room? No, he said his name was Black Steve, so his name's Black, Black Steve Poseidon. <laughs> right. All right. How far am I from the table? You right now, as it stands, are about 20 or so feet away. Cool. Okay. Well, as we all know, black people are superior runners. So let's say in this, <laughs> let's say in this uh, particular moment, I am a, what's called, I am, a, what's that guy's name? The guy that did running so fast. Usain Bolt? Donovan Bailey. Yes, I am. I have become Usain Bolt temporarily. And <laughs> I have dashed to the table. And instead of taking the head goon, I have decided to take Dr. Again. Gill. Oh, no. Okay. Negotiate yeah. for me. <laughs> and I go, I can't help but think that I had this coming. <laughs> you know, so, you know uh, something that my dad always told me is that the smartest people surround themselves with smart people. So if you're a good negotiator, I got to surround myself with you. So <laughs> you here have done a terrible job with this. Me? Yeah. How? I took And surrounding yourself with smart people? <laughs> We're all idiots. <laughs> look around. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I mean, sometimes you got to take a break. Am That's I still fair. in front of you with my hands up? Is that what's happening? No, no, he, he's oh. darted past you now. I darted past you. You know what I mean? It's already, you, like, blink your eyes, I'm gone. I already okay. have a new character. You're like the real Josh Hartnett in that you're not relevant anymore. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm just, like, looking around at other people in the in the room and just kind of saying, like, it's not what it looks like. I have a lot of black friends. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Jesus. Wow. I am not Jesus. a racist. <laughs> but. But. <laughs> anyway. It's always the but. The but always. I, I feel like if you ever started or like are starting a sentence with a I'm not a but, you should just probably not say that sentence. <laughs> but I am not a but. <laughs> so, yeah. Dr. Gill, now that you have a gun pointed to the back of your head. What is yeah, your. Yeah. What is your response? Um, so I put my hands up and I go. Well, hi there, what? young sir. Uh, what's uh, what seems to be what seems to be the problem here? What do you what can I do for you? And well, I put on my most winning smile. Well, my first question is, why when a black man pulls up a gun, why do you all put your hands up? <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, like like logistically speaking, what is that gonna do? Like really, like I'll be honest, like I am not expecting Mr. Slumdog Millionaire. To be carrying a gun mm -hmm. in, his, in his back pocket and being like, ah, caught you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, no, nevertheless, though, what's called, uh, well, unfortunately, uh, see, I had somewhat of a more character that couldn't help me with my needs. And I think from seeing what's happening in the background here, I think you, Dr. Gill, can help me achieve my goal of keeping this park public and by any means necessary. Absolutely. That's, uh, I am a businessman. Convincing people of things is my entire job. Um, Absolutely. All right. So, uh, what do you, what do you want to do? Should we should we talk to Mr. Gary here and see what we can do? Oh no! I want you to put up your money to buy the land from him. Then just hand me over the trust, and then don't you worry. I'll hand you back to your family. You know, what I mean, this could be a very simple transaction for all. Of them. Oh, you know what? I, I I don't make a habit of giving up money. Um, you don't make a habit of giving up money. I don't make a habit <laughs> of killing people. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I do think that my wife. Uh, Robin, uh, as you all know, she's on my show quite frequently. Uh, as my my wife Robin would, would be quite sad if I didn't make it home tonight. So um, I suppose I best go along with this whole plan. Um, I suppose so. Smart okay. man. Like I said, gotta surround myself with smart people. <laughs> Keep my brains in my mustache. 
<laughs> you know, I'm not reconsidering my options. <laughs> uh-oh. uh-oh. <laughs> So at this point, uh, Smegma, who comes from a long, long line of uh, hysterical paranoid suburbanites, uh, like his, like, almost genetic instincts just kick in. And, uh, you know, he, he's he's been in, like, adrenaline mode ever since the, the guns came out and is just, like, has not been even hearing any of the discussion that's been happening. And given the fact that he's standing behind all this decides to uh do a flight or flight thing and just like puts his hands down pulls out his wallet throws it at steep aside and says just take it man just take it and runs out the door just bolts as far away as possible all right so that happens uh, uh doc- dr gill immediately grabs the wallet and starts rifling through it <laughs> all right uh, you know and here's the thing too i'll be honest like what's called like like and like, and this is like a real life feeling what's called like whenever i'm like whenever i'm walking behind someone i feel as if like i'm being like i'm like constantly stared at you know i mean like, and like and like i'm once again like i am just legitimately minding my own business like i don't know like honestly too you know i mean like there's so many different examples of people like thinking they're getting robbed even though the person behind him is just walking straight, you know what I mean? Just, just doing their shit. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, but I just look like course. a mean dude so nobody fucks with me, which is funny, and I enjoy that. Yeah. You say you look like a mean dude? Apparently I do. When I'm just walking, I got I got mad resting bitch face. Mm-hmm. Like, I could be thinking about, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to make pizza rolls when I get home. This is great, and I just look pissed off. So. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, though, uh, Sorry, where were we at? Um, we've, uh, we've gotten we've gotten Smegma's wallet. Doctor Gill is about to sign a check to uh, to buy the land from this uh, libertarian fella. Yeah, I'm signing the check. As I'm signing the check, I say, um, "Well, you know, it's not the first uh, you know bad investment that I made, and I probably won't get a lot of returns on it. But Oprah still got my back, so." <laughs> what investment? This is my line. You buying my line? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I'm going to need a check for some side money just for this whole arrangement. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I hope so. Just is this like a money. special Atlantean underwater version of Oprah, or is this just like regular Oprah that Dr. Gill is hooked up with? Yeah, her, uh, like her, her, you know how she had the, like, in real world or in our universe, she has the, the uh, TV shit or the television program or whatever network called Harpo. It's the mm-hmm. same, but it's Harpoon. Because <laughs> they're underwater, that's the yeah, joke. That's the joke. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I'm... No, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So as you are about to hand that check to the libertarian, it's like time slows down, and you begin to hear a rumble, and then a crack, and then the ear-splitting roar as the earth around you begins to almost explode and you feel like you feel like the land itself is moving now the island itself is beginning to float and stand up from the bottom of the seabed that you found yourself on the entirety of the island looks to be underneath a set of legs (gasps) and that's all time